this prediction that's right up here. I just yell at Larry Brooks like every other New York Rangers. Hey, guys, mom, mom, mom. Answers for the Rangers could come within. I gotta be honest. I'm, I'm still looking over the, how I would fix the Rangers, and that's gonna be a segment for next week or right after the season ends. But none of these free agents are really striking me as that's the guy the Rangers gotta go get. That's the guy the Rangers gotta go sign. And if they try to go too much and too much and many assets elsewhere, then you're gonna get rid of assets and they're gonna screw up their salary. The answers might come from within. Um, we've heard about guys like uh, Carl Hendrickson. We've heard about Tom Reunion. We've heard well, we've seen Tom Reunion this year. Hadn't assisted his first game. Um, Nils Lundqvist is coming. Hopefully, still. I mean, I've watched his highlights. John and I uh, show him on uh, one of our live streams, and it, it he reminds me of Sergei Zubov. And I still think Sergei Zubov was the biggest mistake the New York Rangers ever made by trading him. Um, it, Morgan Barron could be that fourth line center that the Rangers are looking at. Maybe a third line if he really reaches. Um, they, there's players in this system. And again, Julian Gauthier deserves a better shot. Hopefully, Seattle do not take him. Um, I there are players in the system, and they can end up being the answers that we're looking for instead of go get this free agent, go throw money at this guy. Because I'm not convinced on Casey Zizekas. I still think he's a great product for the Islanders and great with that line that they got. But I'm not shelling out four million dollars for Casey Zizekas or even that three million. Or I mean, the flat cap era. But it's uh. It's gonna be, it's it's gonna be interesting how they identify these assets. And again, all this is the answers could be from within. That would be great. That would be ideal. Then you don't have to pay anybody. But except for obviously, go get Jack Eichel. That might ruin this entire uh, editorial that I just did. But it's it's just the idea of you don't have to just go. You could just still develop guys. You were talking about fourth line centers and Casey Seekers and. Someone that we saw at the end of the season sticks out for me because I feel like if given a chance, I think that he could be the bottom six center that this team needs going forward. It's Morgan Barron. Morgan Barron's got size. He's got skill. He's got smarts. He's a good skater for his size. Um, I'll get to that in a moment, the Henrik Lundqvist. But I, I want to I stick with Mark's uh, editorial here because he's actually got a really good point. Uh, Braden Schneider coming up in the system. Nils Lundqvist. I mean, if you can move Braden Schneider to the left side and have him play left side defense at the NHL, I mean, that that's <laughs> more Russian. <laughs> hey, in Soviet Russia, how can you play you? So, yeah, um, I, I would say... Yeah, there, there are answers in the system. Maybe if Adam Edstrom develops some skating, maybe he could be a bottom six player. Who knows? But, I mean, uh, Carl Hendrickson is another one that hasn't really been talked about a lot. He could uh, he could be maybe a middle six center. Who knows? Maybe the answers are with him. Maybe we don't. Maybe, who, all right, so before the 2010 World Junior Championships, Derek Stepan was on the radar as a good, but not great prospect. Then that tournament came along. He led the entire tournament in scoring, was over two points per game in that tournament, had 15 points in seven games, was climbing the record ranks for most points in a tournament, trying to uh, catch Doug Waite. And out of nowhere, he became an option. And then the next season, what did he do? Cemented himself as a Ranger for the next six, seven years. So, you never know. Something could happen. You, you, you might be onto something here, Mark. Um, and it's, my, yeah, my, Anthony. My take, my take on your go, Mark, is it's, it's bang on. Um, I do think it's not always best to go out and spend money in free agency or, or, make, a, or make a big trade. Um, you got to build it within. Um, that's how you, and a lot of times, you manage cap early in a player's career, and it's how you have organic growth. But I will say, it comes a point where you need you need to add from the outside, take that next step. And 
Um, obviously, just because I'm an Islander fan, I use an example. If you look at their team, they really built within. Andres Lee is homegrown. Brock Nelson's homegrown. Barzell and Beauvillier came up with the Islanders. Um, you know, obviously, Sezikis and Martin, they were Islanders. Pelik and Pollock, they were drafted by the Islanders and came up within. But I think I know who you're about to say, but keep going. To take to take the next step, like for instance, do you guys think if they don't make that trade for Paz Joe, they make the conference finals last year? I mean, he was dynamite in the playoffs. If they don't trade for Kyle Palmieri, do they make it in the conference finals? He slowed down in the semifinals, but look he- how much he scored against Pittsburgh and Boston. So the Rangers have Taco, Lafreniere, Fox. They have a lot of homegrown players. I think this is the off season where. They and granted they're not coming off a, a long playoff run like the Islanders, but this is the off season where now, where now you sprinkle in, you sprinkle in some moves from from the outside, and then you look to take the next step. So whether that is a a, a signing of Casey Zizekas for the bottom six of Sean Corrali, um, or trading for Jack Eichel, that's where you really add from the outside, and then you go from there and you see what your team is made of and see if they can get the job done or you need more or you need need more tinkering um the only problem with the eichel trade where i think you have to just be a little careful for is when you make that eichel trade you don't want to take away from a lot of those homegrown players that you already have in place so that's that that's the kind of like the, the fine line that the rangers need to walk when they trade for eichel but yeah, I think they have they have enough homegrown talent that maybe now's the year where they they tinker with their team in free agency and through trade to take the next step. And for them, that's you know getting back into the playoffs. And that's why I use the term identifying assets because you need to figure out what you got. And if you know how many, because again, there are certain spots you're going to slot guys in. There's only so many top six forwards. There's only so many, um, and not many guys, vet, veterans will move down to a bottom six. That's why with Kreider, you're stuck with them. So, a, and even, even though I'm the president of the Chris Kreider fan club, but it's, he, he'll he'll move down. It's harder to move him down than it is to say, Alexei Lafreniere, you're on the third line with Philip Hedl. Uh Just, I want to address one comment. Uh, Blue shirt, we did talk about that earlier. It's going to be on a separate video as well, but also it's at the 30 minute, uh, about the 32 minute mark. But um, I don't think they trade Kako. You don't have to worry no. about that. No. Um, if Kako goes, it's going to be in in a uh, in a deal. And we're going to do some Q&A in, in about two minutes when we close this up. But um, you don't have, it's the, but there's only three right side uh, defensemen. So if that's Truba, Fox, and then let's say Nils Lundqvist survives all this. Then where's Brian Schneider go? Um, let's let's look at the left side. Then you have Lindgren. And again, you might need you're going to need like a, a six or a seven. But that's usually a veteran that you're not really going to use that often. So that's where that's where this gets perplexing. And um, yeah, should have traded Kreider before, before yes. I signed him, but that's they didn't know they were going to get the first overall John. pick. That's that's the other thing. Here's the problem I have with that. Like, I I wanted them to trade Kreider, and I know Anthony and I we talked about the 2019 draft, and there was a big rumor that the Rangers and the Avalanche were talking about pick number 16 in that draft, and I wanted that pick because I wanted Alex Newhook, and I thought Alex Newhook would have been perfect. He would have been a good fit as a as a second line center, maybe even a first line center one day with Mika Zibanejad. You would have gotten that player. It's a different story. And, you know, I, I do agree with Chris at the bottom there. It, it, I, to a point, they do seem similar, like similar players, especially Butchnevich Taco now with Butchnevich turning the corner that he's turned. And I'll give Quinn credit for that because he did work on it. But I get why, like I said, I get why they signed Kreider, but I, I thought that you got you have to turn the corner on a guy like that and a guy that's very inconsistent, you really want to give those types of players six plus million dollar contracts? No. No. Yeah, the streaky guys, it's it's hard to do that with, but also I think sometimes what happens with bridge deals is you overpay for the next deal. Sort of, but you you could buy out. But the thing is, is that a lot of those deals, when they're not bridge deals, 
you buy out UFA years and you give them more of an instant gratification now, but you keep their cap hit lower in the future. So this way you don't have to pay more money on the AAV in the future. And you're not going to be able to do that if you keep guys like Butch David Kreider deals. That's why Kreider, they should have done that with Kreider. L listen, if you wanted to resign him, fine. The no movement clause, stupid. Stupid, stupid. It's stupid. stupid. It's, it's so stupid. That, yeah, that's, that's the reason why they don't... I'm wearing a Ryan Callahan jersey right now. That's the reason why he's not on the team. Yeah, he wore a no movement clause. Yeah. And, and the wrestling fans that are out there, Randy Orton to Kofi Kingston. Stupid. Stupid. Oh, and so before stupid. before I turn this back to Ann... And, Pride is a no movement, not a no, not an NTC. It's an MNC. It's an MMC. I believe it turns into an M. See, you know, a modified no trade. If, if they would have gave him an NTC, they wouldn't have had to protect him in the expansion. Or Seattle probably wouldn't have took him because of the salary, but at least they could have saved another spot. I don't. Seattle might have taken him. Seattle, By the way, welcome, Frank. Uh, Frank, last season, I would have agreed with you, but he's definitely got some muscle now. Uh, there's a picture from, uh, I say, October 2019. And then it's about March of 2020, I believe it is. Yeah. And Taco looks like this in the first picture, and he looks like this in the second picture. He feels right, but but uh, just to go back to, I'm gonna go back to this comment, and then we're gonna go to Q and A after. If we're gonna close out this thing, got, and go to Q and A. No rumors to go over before we do Q and A. By the way. Okay, great. We'll do the we'll do the rumors, then we'll do Q and A. But um, uh, as far as I'm concerned with this. Kako and Kratzoff have the bigger upside than Buchnevich. Like those two can actually be elite players. They, there's a, a a chance at that. Buchnevich, you know what he is. Buchnevich is just he's maybe a twenty goal scorer at that. Um, and I've, and we've seen it. We've seen it the last few years. I like the guy. I would love it if we could keep him uh, as a Ranger, but it's it, we're in a cap error in a flat cap error. You're gonna have to make decisions that aren't going to be the best. So, uh, or financially sound, move him to another team, and then you'll see what happens. Uh, they'll watch him get moved next to Connor McDavid and pop in fifty next year. <laughs> uh, so, all right. So again, what do you think are the answers to the Rangers within, where we all need to find our answers, or um, do they need to go identify their assets and make some big trades? Put your comments down below, like, share, and subscribe. Did you like that video? Of course you did. So why not check out some more of our content? You can check the playlist right here or right here. Your ideas are intriguing to me and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.